Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Apisical, and I'm the Executive Director of the USC Dornsife Admission and Student Success Office. We're here today to talk about the pre-health experience at USC. Pre-health is a term that we use here at USC to describe students interested in a wide range of health professional fields, including medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, physical therapy, physician assistants, and others. I'm wondering if you all in the audience could indicate for us what health professional field you're hoping to currently see yourself in. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll right now. If you could just take a quick second just to indicate for us, again, this doesn't lock you into anything, just to indicate for us what you're thinking about or what field you're hoping to go into as you're looking ahead toward a career in the health professions. We'll give it just a couple seconds while we get some responses in here. Great, thanks so much. So it looks like most of you did indicate an interest in the field of medicine. And yes, while most of our pre-health students at USC, like you, are pre-med students, please rest assured that our pre-health academic advisors also work with students who are interested in attending graduate schools other than medical school. Pre-health is a pre-professional emphasis at USC, meaning that it's not a major and it's not a minor. This means that any student of any major can declare themselves pre-health. Although you're certainly welcome to apply to USC as a biological sciences or human biology major, if that's where your interests lie, you don't necessarily have to. By declaring a pre-professional emphasis in pre-health, you'll be able to work with our pre-health academic advisors to ensure that you receive guidance and advice on the courses and activities you should engage in to prepare for a health professional school, regardless of the major you select. The common application includes a space for you to indicate a pre-health emphasis on your admission application if you'd like. It helps us to better understand your current goals and ambitions as we review your application. And please don't worry if you change your mind later on and switch your area of pre-health focus from, say, medicine to dentistry, or if you eventually decide to leave the pre-health path completely, that's okay. While academic advisors provide ongoing guidance to students, we also have other staff members and peers who provide support in formal ways, such as via our supplemental instruction program, and informal ways, such as mentorship through student organizations. I would say that our USC community is centered on support to students and that the pre-health community is a particularly tight one. We have some amazing students who are part of that pre-health community here today to answer your questions and provide you with insight and advice. I'd like to have them turn on their cameras now and introduce themselves briefly. As they're doing so, I'd like to mention that we will have an opportunity for you to ask questions of our panelists a little later in the program. When you're ready for when we're ready for your questions, we'll ask you to submit them via the Q&A box on the bottom of your screen. So, I'm going to go ahead and have um Andrea go ahead and start with introductions. Hi everybody. My name is Andrea I'm a senior at USC. I'm originally from White House Station, New Jersey. I'm currently majoring in biochemistry with a minor in history, and I'm on the pre-med track, so my goal is to attend medical school. And some of the activities and involvements I'm a part of on campus include, obviously, Dorn Science Ambassadors. I do undergraduate research for the chemistry department. Um, I am part of the Trojan Chemistry Club, and I am part of the Panhellenic community. Great, Karina. Hi everyone, I'm Karina. I'm a student or I'm a senior here studying health and human sciences. I'm from right outside LA, Ventura County. I'm not too sure if you guys are aware of that. Um, but I'm on the pre-physician assistant track. And with that, I'm involved with the student advisory board at the pre-health office. I volunteer at a local hospital, which is known as Cedar Sinai. I am um, a part of the Dorn's Eye Transfer Ambassador, and I'm also a part of um a uh, club here that's called Accepted SC. So we just helped first generation students apply to colleges. Great. And last but not least, Riley. Hi, my name is Riley. I'm from Redondo Beach, which is around like half an hour away from USC. So pretty close. I'm a senior majoring in human biology with minors in healthcare studies and cinematic arts. And I, like Andrea, I'm on the pre medical track. Um, some of my involvements include Dornsife Ambassadors. Um, undergraduate research with the Morton lab, which is a neurobio lab, um, Trojan marketing group, Korean American leaders in Hollywood, and I volunteer at Keck, which is the USC hospital. 
Great. Thanks so much. And I will say we also have um, young men who are also interested in following health professional fields um, in paths, but um, unfortunately, none of them were available today. But we have three amazing student ambassadors who are here and ready to answer your questions. So I have no doubt they'll be able to share a lot with you here today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start us off with a few questions for our panelists. So since we want to be sure to answer your questions as well, please feel free to submit your questions via the Q&A box. We'll try our best to answer as many questions as we can in the time that we have today. But again, I'm going to start with some questions of my own. So um, I'm wondering if each of you could talk about why you chose your majors and minors and perhaps how your classroom experiences have been relevant to your pre-health pursuits. Yeah, so I am obviously a biochemistry major. The reason is because in high school, I took both AP chemistry and AP bio, and I fell in love with both subjects and couldn't really pick or choose between just majoring in solely chemistry or bio. So I decided to combine both logically. Um, and I really love the major. I love my cohort. It's like a small cohort. There's, I think, like 50-ish people graduating with me this year. Um, but what I really like is not only does it allowed me to like finish my requirements for medical school, such as like Gen Chem, O Chem, Gen Bio. It also allows me to choose a lot of upper level dip courses that expand beyond this. And I can like take courses of my interests, such as like mammology or immunology. Um, and then with my history minor, I've always loved history in high school. And I found that, you know, with all my pursuits in STEM, in the classroom and out of classroom, I kind of wanted something else just to diversify my classes and pursuit of knowledge at USC. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Um, similar to Andrea, I wanted to pick a major that would allow me to get credit for my prerequisites, but I also, I love psychology courses and with my major, I'm allowed to choose from modules that allow me to take psychology courses, sociology, gerontology, and since I love psychology so much, and I think it's really effective in helping me prepare for my um, profession because of effective like communication with my patients or just getting a better understanding of what's going on. So with my major, I'm allowed to take a lot of psychology courses that really introduced, like just help my interest in the passion. Um, for me, really similarly, I wanted to do an interdisciplinary major that combined like all the natural sciences since I've been interested in the natural sciences since sciences since high school. Um, and human biology, I think was perfect for me, especially since I knew I was interested in the medical field as well. And I get to take a lot of classes that combine like chemistry, biology, physics. Um, and it's really interesting. It also helps me to learn more about the fields I want to go into, obviously, which is also why I chose my minor in healthcare studies. Um, and for my minor in cinematic arts, I actually joined a club called Trojan Marketing Group my freshman year because I thought I was interested in minoring in marketing. But through that club, I was able to be on set for a commercial for a company. And it was like the coolest experience ever. And I really fell in love with um, film and being on set. So I chose to do a cinematic arts minor instead. And with all my classes, especially my STEM classes, um, they helped me more, learn more about the medical field and also have really prepared me for um, the future, such as for taking the MCAT. The classes are super, super relevant for that. That's amazing. I'm so glad that all three of you really were kind of able to forge your own paths and put together in kind of a group of academic courses that really speak to you and enable you to kind of be the best that you can be and engage in courses that maybe you might not ever have had a chance to take otherwise. It's amazing. Um, I know that all three of you have gotten involved in research. So a lot of the students in the audience may also be looking ahead toward future research opportunities as undergraduate students in college. So could you tell us about your research experiences and how you found those opportunities? I think freshman year, you know, coming in as like a pre-med uh, person, it's very like tricky when you hear like people saying like, oh, I need research, I need research, this, this, that. And it can almost kind of feel tense as if like pressuring you to also get research, which is kind of how I felt. Um, but honestly, my recommendation for anyone, um, no matter which college you go to, is take your time with research. It doesn't, you don't have to exactly jump in it right away. Um, but I jumped into my research, I think March of my spring semester freshman year. Um, I've realized coming in first semester at USC that I really vibed with the chemistry department a lot, especially with the professor I had during first semester. 
So what happened was it was my chem TA in general chem labs. He was a grad student. He was advertising for one of his friends who needed an undergraduate researcher. So I emailed that email that he sent me, I got in contact with the professor. I work under Professor Mark Thompson in chemistry. It's inorganic. So we work with a lot of like metal reactions. Um, and I've stuck with that lab since. I've worked under two different grad students. My first grad student graduated in 2023, I believe. Um, and that she project was involved a lot with more medicine type stuff where we looked at ocular and temporary eye wounds um, for polymer research and how polymers can treat that. And then I switched over to a different grad student and now I'm looking at more OLEDs, kind of how like to make things like your screen light up in your phone. So it's not really chemistry related, I mean, not really medicine related, but research doesn't necessarily have to be medicine related if you're pre-med. So the way that I got involved into my research was I ended up taking a biology course here at USC and I attended a lot of office hours and I ended up just loving my professor as a person. She was so sweet and she was so willing to help. And I was like, wow, she's the best. And so then I ended up emailing her that summer after that class completed. And I was, I asked her and I was like, are you doing any research or do you have anyone that you know that you could recommend me to, to do some research? And at that time, it was just an idea she had started up. So I think this was really unique because we were able to start from the ground up and create the whole research process. And I've been doing that for the past like year and a half. So it's been really nice. Uh, for me, my path was actually very similar to Andrea's. I started research in the spring semester of my freshman year because I was taking BISC 220, which is one of the um, general biology requirements, especially if you're pre-med. Um, and my lab TA was looking for people to work um, in his PI's lab or principal investigator's lab. Uh, so I emailed him and I got a lab position through that. And I've been working in the Morton lab, which is a neurobio lab focused on um, the RNA exosome, which is a ubiquitously um, expressed complex that when mutated cause neuro, causes neurodegenerative diseases um, ever since. So I've been working there for um, two and a half years. Great, that all sounds like amazing work that you've all been able to do, even as undergraduate students, it's amazing. Um, you know, health professions are at their core helping professions. So with that in mind, Riley, could you actually talk about a community service activity outside the classroom that has been particularly meaningful for you? Yeah, there are actually so many um, volunteer experiences or community outreaches, it, outreach experiences that you can um, participate in through USC. For example, the Joint Educational Project. Um, I volunteer for them. And what I do is I volunteer at elementary schools and teach them about a topic that I'm learning about in college. So for example, last semester, I taught um, a nutrition-based class to these elementary schoolers, and it was a really great experience. I also volunteer for the Midnight Mission, which um, uh, is a homeless shelter in Los Angeles that provides meal services three times a day. And I usually volunteer for the dinner service. And that's just through my, um, with my own time with my friends at USC. So there are tons of great experiences. Great, thanks. Um, going back to the classroom experience, are there resources available if you need extra help, especially in these challenging science courses? And, and, and what's academic advising like? So I guess if we could have Karina and Andrea kind of cover those areas. I think one of the more unique aspects about pre-health at USC is the emphasis of you're not alone. There's so many resources out there. And specifically in the pre-health office, I know that they have, it varies. You could have a more academic formal meeting and you do that with an academic advisor, or you could have an informal chat and say, how did you like successfully complete this course and just talk with a student advisor. So I think that's really cool. You get that formality and informality. It's up to you on the type of conversation you're like, you would like to do, but also a pretty cool thing about Dorn's Eyes is that they provide free tutoring and they do that for basic biology courses, chem courses and other stuff. So I think that's pretty useful. Yeah, um, the main free tutoring thing that Karina was mentioning earlier is called supplemental instruction. It's basically where an upperclassman has taken the class previously, scored I think like an A minus or above on it, and is has like two to three sessions per week discussing the topics that are covered in that lecture class. 
um, just in case you want more help outside of going to office hours for your TA or your lab professor. I mean, not your lab professor, just your professor in general. And there's also a lot of different clubs and orgs on campus that provide like tutoring also from just beyond like what USC provides. So for example, I'm part of the Trojan Chemistry Club. We are both a social and a kind of a professional club in the sense of we do have like informal gatherings to hang out, but we also provide tutoring services with the aid of the professors in the chemistry department for students who are in like the gen chem, o chem classes that are needed for pre-health. Great, thanks so much. And then I'm wondering about what the student experience is actually like. So can you have a normal life or, you know, um, however you want to define that as a pre-health student at USC? And are there activities you've been able to engage in just for fun, perhaps even some that have nothing to do with your health-related goals? Uh, yeah, I could go first. Um, as I was talking about earlier, I'm minoring in cinematic arts. So a lot of my clubs are based on that, for example, Korean American Leaders in Hollywood and then Trojan Marketing Group, which has absolutely nothing to do with my pre-health emphasis. Um, so there are clubs that I've joined that have that aren't pre-medical, but then also I have a lot of free time to you know hang out with my friends, whether it be to like get a meal together, go cafe hopping. Um, so yeah, I totally have a normal life outside of just medicine. Um, and I highly recommend um, really like scheduling your time well. So using Google Calendar and things like that. But yeah, I think USC is a great time and I have time for other things. I can go second. Um, kind of jumping off of Riley's point about organization, I think that's really key. My friends and I, we use Google Calendar and we'll kind of see what areas we have available, just kind of syncing up all of our calendars together and just making sure you're well advanced in your preparation. I think that's really important. Um, so you're able to do those activities you truly love. I mean, door, or USC is like placed in the middle of downtown LA. So there's so many restaurants and coffee shops that you can go to, but we also have football games that are super fun here. We have one this upcoming Friday. That's going to be pretty cool. So yeah. I agree with both what Riley and Karina have said. Another point I wanted to add is I'm part of a panhellenic sorority on campus. And a lot of the questions I see, especially with potential new members walking into the door is, oh, can you balance like joining Greek life with being pre-health or pre-professional? And I say definitely yes. Um, it's always fun because I think, you know, having more pre-health and STEM sisters also in a sorority kind of cultivates an environment where you guys have like a shared aspect with each other. But I think it's where you can, you know, study together um, and go to class together, which I did a lot with, I think, two of my sorority sisters last semester for physics. But yes, so you could definitely have a life outside of pre-health. Um, I'm also involved with volunteering in a history museum that's not related to pre-health whatsoever on my weekends, just because I really wanted to get more involved in LA's local kind of history um, outside the classroom. Great, that sounds amazing. Um, we're going to now focus on some of your questions that you've been submitting via the Q&A box. Please continue to go ahead and submit questions. Um, I'm also going to direct your attention to the answer tab within the Q&A box. Um, some of my colleagues from the Dornsife Admission and Student Success Office are also here at the webinar hovering in the background, and they may be responding to some of your questions via that answer tab in the Q&A box. And so I just want to point that out as well. But um, something I actually want to start with is something that um, I guess closely related to what Andrea was talking about. You know, what is really the community like here? And so how would each of you describe or characterize the pre-health student community here at USC? I would definitely say what sets USC's pre-health community apart from other colleges is the collaboration and kind of like we're all in this together mindset that a lot of pre-health students have. Um, because definitely I think with your challenging more intro courses, just like OCHEM, GenCHEM, or GenBio, what I find is the people here are more willing to definitely like spend time with you and like do group study sessions, which I think is really beneficial because I think learning together in a group is more helpful than you trying to sit in a library alone <laughs> looking over the work. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think the co collaboration aspect is so important. 
the amount of hours I spent with my friends studying in like the dorm lounges is insane and we always have the best time and it's really helpful to have other people to study with and I think everyone is super open to studying with you as well. Yeah, everyone is just super sweet. I've actually met some of my best friends through taking my prerequisite courses because everyone is just so willing to help you out if you're confused on a topic or if you're able to help a classmate out. I remember some of the, my best memories have been in labs where everyone is just trying to get through a lab and help each other out. So it's pretty fun. Great, thanks. Um, there's some questions coming in about what are some unique resources that USC has for pre-health students. Anything in particular that any of you have taken advantage of? Um, going back to what we were talking about earlier, I would say the SI sessions for sure are unique to USC and they're super helpful. Um, there are people who have taken the class already and hold sessions and make worksheets that can help you out with your classes. And they're always, the SI leaders are always available to you. So that is a great resource as well as your pre-health advisor, because they help you make sure that you're on track for the, um, emphasis that you are looking to go into. Another great resource that USC has is the writing center. Um, this is not just for pre-health, this is like any type of writing coursework that you have, you can go to the center, but with applications coming up, I know that they are able to look over like your common statement for medical school, which is what I plan on using them for. And they've also just helped me in general with some of my like writing classes, especially like history and like your required like RIT 150 and RIT 340 classes. The pre-health office has so many amazing resources out there. I think one of the coolest events that they unfortunately didn't happen in the spring but most likely in the upcoming year but uh they're gonna have at the Keck Center a whole webinar and just a live stream of a live surgery so I think that's pretty cool um there's so many cool experiences like that and I know you can um there's programs where you could specifically sign up for to shadow any physicians or any medical related professions that you're interested in yeah, I know the pre-health office also sponsors a lot of workshops and um, panels so that you can all hear also from um, admission professionals that work at other schools that are, you know, exactly what are they looking for on those all important health professional school applications. Um, the Keck Mentor Day that Karina was kind of alluding to there where students can go visit the health sciences campus that is part of USC, but it's a separate campus at USC, which is where our medical school is located and our pharmacy school. And so, um, really amazing opportunities to be able to engage with the entire uh, pre-health community in some sense um, at USC. Thanks so much. Um, you know, how do, here's a question um, that's interesting. How do students discover pre-health pathways outside of being pre-med? Because I think a lot of our students are already coming in thinking, you know, I want to go into medicine and that's all they can think of. I have a, I have a pediatrician, I have a doctor, so I know what that looks like, you know, but how do students actually explore or discover the other wealth of options that are out there? I think the best thing you could do is just get out there and shadow. You can look up nearby, for what I did, I looked up nearby physician assistants and would just reach out and see if I could shadow them. And I that's how I confidently was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. So that's probably the best way to do it. Or even another resource I was using during COVID, um, I wasn't really allowed to get out there too much, but I would look up on YouTube day in my life as a blank, you know? So that was another cool thing that I did. Um, I know one of my friends went switched from pre-medical to pre-dentistry. And what he did is there are a lot of um, pre-professional organizations on campus. And he reached out to e-board members of the pre-dentistry organizations and just talked to them about what what they found interesting about dental school rather than medical school and becoming a dentist rather than um, a doctor and then found out more about dentistry through that path. So there are so many um, opportunities for you here at USC to talk to different people who are going into um, different um, health professions. So um, yeah, that's what he did. And I think that's a really great experience. Fun fact, I actually wasn't pre-health um, or biochemistry when I walked in. I um, originally was accepted to USC as a history major. Um, I switched that major, I think, right before registration for your first semester of classes. 
um, just because I think that summer I kind of realized I wanted to do biochem more, but I still wasn't pre-med until I think my second semester at USC. And the reason why it kind of took me long was just because I also wanted to explore other options going on at USC. And I think one of the main reasons that kind of helped me narrow down my choice into being pre-med was just talking to like the advisor, like scheduling appointments with the pre-health advising um, counselors, along with just like talking with professors during office hours. I feel like, you know, if you, have questions for that class definitely go ask them but sometimes just talking to them and asking about like hey like you know how's like your why did you choose your career path and have them explain kind of like their life choices also and sometimes they're also in fields related to medicine and they talk about that subject and then they kind of ask you about what you want to do and they kind of it's back and forth conversation where you come to realize like oh maybe medicine is something i want to pursue and that's kind of how i did it Definitely as a whole community here, I think of support that you find. That's that's really great advice. Um, you know, we have another question here from a student who's wondering about, um, you know, aside from pre-health opportunities like student organizations that all of you have mentioned being part of and research, um, do undergraduate students have access to doing either shadowing or volunteer work in local nearby hospitals? And so more of that clinical kind of aspect is, um, is that something that any of you have gotten a chance to get involved in or that you have friends who've gotten in, involved in? And are, are those opportunities easy to find? Uh, yeah, so actually, I and a lot of my friends volunteer at the Keck Hospital, which is USC's hospital. It's a really easy process to apply. You just look online for the application, and you email it over. And you, I think pretty much all of my friends who have applied have been accepted. They really like having um, USC student volunteers. Um, and I think there are a ton of other clinics around USC that you can vol volunteer at as well. It doesn't have to be Keck. It's just Keck is really convenient because there is a shuttle that goes to Keck. Um, that's a free shuttle. And it goes just to the uh, to Union Station and then straight to Keck. So super convenient. Um, for shadowing, I know Keck has a program where if you have 200 volunteer hours, then you can start shadowing the uh, medical professionals. But if you want to look for another route, you can also email medical professionals that you find online. But for Keck, I know that's how their program works. So I actually volunteer at Cedar sinai and the way I got into it was just looking up on their volunteer services. So I'm in the transformative care at the bedside. Um, so that's the program I'm in. And it was honestly pretty easy. I just sent in an application, had an orientation and an interview. So it was a pretty easy process. It's interesting. All three of us are shat I'm volunteering at three different hospitals in Los Angeles. I volunteer in Adventist Health White Memorial in downtown LA through a program called Cope Health Scholars. They actually visited USC to have like a coffee chat informally, I think last semester. And that's how I got involved just because it was an opportunity I found just in my email one day. And I said, sure, why not? Let me sign up for this. Um, but when it comes to shadowing, I did not actually do like the Keck USC shadowing program because I, I believe they don't offer it this semester, but you could reach out to certain Keck doctors or medical professions that you know, and you can just shadow them directly yourself through that way. And that's what I've been doing with one of the oncologists at Keck. I should also mention again, because this is about um, pre-health and not just pre-med, we also have a dentistry school here on campus that students can volunteer with. We have um, research opportunities with Children's Hospital Los Angeles that provide students with kind of clinical research hours. And so getting a chance to engage in a wide variety of settings is something that also is pretty important in exploring where, you know, where, what health type of health professional school you think might fit you and your um, personality and interests best. And so that's something else that, that is, um, that is possible. Um, we have someone who's asking about, you know, kind of how to balance it all in a sense, especially, you know, when you're so busy with all of your academics and clubs, and then you're also thinking about preparing for the next phase of your lives in some in some ways. And so um, specifically what they're wondering about is whether it's viable or even possible to engage in a double major, you know, for, you know, and, and still stay on a pre-health track. I know each, none of you are involved in double majors, but you have minors. And so I know that's something that's a little bit different, but but is it even possible for a student to think about doing a double major and being on a pre-health track? And I think the bigger question too, in addition to that, I'm wondering if you could um, address is just about work-life balance in general. You know, how do you kind of, you know, maintain sanity and, and be a balanced um, person while again, doing so much?
I think one of the best parts about just maintaining that work-life balance is if you do have a stressful week, it happens, but you can just go with your friends. I do this a lot with my best friend. We'll like visit local public libraries and we'll just kind of like explore LA through that. But honestly, you just have to take a moment and be like, I'm working so hard. I deserve a break. And you just have to put yourself first and realize the books can, they'll, they'll be there. You'll be able to come back and take that moment for yourself. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think a double major is completely doable as long uh, for pre-health students, as long as one of your majors has to do with pre-health. So you're getting um, your, your prerequisites through that major. And it's not just a completely separate aspect of your college experience, because then that might be a little bit difficult. Um, but yeah, I have friends who are double majors and they are able to balance it. And I have a major and a double minor right now, and I'm able to balance it with having some time for myself as well. So it's completely doable. I believe there's another Dorn's Life ambassador. Her name's Isabel. She's double majoring in both neuroscience and biochemistry. The way she did that, she said, was just because a lot of those classes for each of those majors kind of overlap and just taking advantage of that allowed her to be able to pursue a double major in both. There's another kid within my cohort in biochemistry who's double majoring in international relations, which is a totally and completely separate field. Um, he loves it just because it's interdisciplinary and every time he walks out of a biochem classroom, you know, he doesn't have to think about biochem 24 seven, he can go to his IR classes. Um, and he's still able to graduate within, I believe, four years is what his plan is. So it's definitely doable. When it comes to having time outside for yourself, I agree with what Karina and Riley said. You know, there are days where it is tough, especially during midterm seasons or finals when they approach. But um, I think what I like about USC is there's such a supportive and collaborative community with friends both in pre-health and friends who are not in pre-health who just kind of comes to your side and comes to your aid and, you know, is a really good support system for you to have on those days when you're not exactly feeling 100% or on days to hang out with, you know. Yeah, that's fair. That's definitely great advice. Um, Riley, we have someone who is asking about the possibility of studying abroad um, and also being on a pre-health path. So I know that you got a chance to spend some time away from campus. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I got to participate in a Maymester and it actually covered one of my general education requirements, which, which was super awesome. Um, I was interested in religion and cultural studies in general, and that has nothing to do with my track. So being able to take a class which um, envelops that passion and that that interest was really awesome. I got to go to India with Professor Diana Blaine and we went to, um, I think it was seven or eight different uh, cities in India and was able to um, study all the different religions. And it was just the coolest experience, especially because I don't know if I would have been able to go on a trip to India otherwise. Um, so we spent three and a half weeks there and it was just the coolest thing. There was, we had tour guides the entire time. So it was also a really easy process. And through the May semester, they coordinated our flights, our hotel stays, um, the tour guides, where we're eating, and it was just a really easy and amazing process. So I highly recommend going on a May semester or a July semester or studying abroad if um, it works in your schedule. Great. And I should mention that with May semesters and July semesters, because they are kind of um, standalone courses in and of themselves, you're not have, you're not studying abroad for an entire semester away from campus. So it also kind of helps with uh, managing all of the different courses that you're wanting to take, say, at USC in the United States. Um, this is kind of just an add on in a sense. Yeah. And in addition, um, it's part of your so the May semesters are part of your spring tuition and the July semesters are part of your fall tuition. So during the actual semester, you can take less courses, which definitely helps with the course load. Great, thanks. Um, we have some students who are asking about why you chose USC in the first place. And I know that you're all seniors, but thinking back um, to when you applied to USC, um, could you talk a little bit about what specifically it was about USC that caused you to choose um, to come here? So I'm actually a transfer student. Um, and so mine was pretty unique. I didn't have honestly any intention of attending USC at all. I, after my first year or during my first year, I ended up visiting some of my best friends who came here at, to USC and I visited them for the weekend. And I honestly just fell in love with 
the liveliness of the campus, all the buzzing of students. And the campus was just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. And I just did some more research into the school and I just fell in love with everything about it. So then I decided to apply. Yeah, I completely agree. I think the campus is beautiful. The culture is amazing. Everyone has so much cool spirit and love for USC and rightly so because it's like such an amazing place to be. Um, in addition, the class size for the upper division classes are really small. So you have a lot of individualized support, especially in your pre-medical classes, which I feel like it's it may be hard to find at other schools. Um, and I feel like the campus in general, especially if you're in Dornsife, because we have the, our separate colleges, it gives you kind of that like liberal arts feel, um, even with such a large student body. And I also wanted to go to a school with a large underclassmen student body. So it was like the best of both worlds. As someone who is out of state, I knew I did not want to stay in New Jersey to go to school. Um, and one of the best pros about USC was the weather. Um, having four seasons is fun, but winter, you know, by the time February rolls around, it's not fun anymore. So I really like the weather that USC has. Um, in addition, I agree with what everyone else has said in terms of spirit and community. I feel like when I was visiting other colleges during my college tour and application timeline, it just felt like the student population at USC was just more vigorous and had more of like a, they liked, they had more of like a school spirit you could feel when you walked around campus, you could say. Um, I also really liked the abundance of like majors and minors that USC offer compared to certain schools. Um, Cause I know certain schools don't offer that many like STEM majors that you could really take where there's a limited amount for pre-health. What I liked about USC was I think there's at least 10, like look at all of us, all three of us are majoring in different majors. So that just shows you how diverse interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary USC is. Great, thanks. Um, looking at it from the other side now, since you're all seniors and getting ready to graduate, um, we have a question in the Q&A. Um, do you feel well prepared um, by USC to go into a health professional school after graduation? I think I can go first. Um, I definitely feel prepared. I feel like the courses, especially the prereqs that USC has offered, has definitely taught us well. I recently took my MCAT, I believe, two months ago and got my score back, which I was happy with. So I just think the courses at USC were definitely helped me prepare for that. Um, in addition, I just think USC has also taught me to be kind of how to live independently as someone who's from all the way across the country. My time as USC has really taught me how to really live with myself and figure out my routine and what, what, what in terms of studying and planning out activities. Yeah, I completely agree. I think USC has a great amount of vigor for the classes. Um, so I feel prepared for the classes that I will have to take in medical school. And in addition, um, being independent has been so helpful and learning how to organize my time and how to officially efficiently study, especially with all the activities always going on around USC. Um, being able to do so has been awesome and I definitely feel prepared for medical school. I agree. I just feel like having all of the stuff on my plate that I have right now, I've really learned the proper usage of time management. And I feel like that's really important for futuring my education, just making sure that I'm as effective as possible. Are any of you planning to take a gap year before or two before um, you start your health professional um, schooling? I will be taking a gap year. I need to finish up getting my clinical hours to apply to physician assistant school. So I will be taking one, yeah. Um, I will also be taking a gap year. And I actually talked with one of the pre-health advisors before deciding to do so. And she was telling me that around 75% of students who are in the pre-med field take at least one gap year. So it's completely normal to do so. Um, and it gives me time to study for my MCAT. And also um, I decided to take a gap year, especially because I didn't want to apply for medical school while I was still in school. So now I can apply after I've graduated. So it just gives me time to think about it and also time to um, take a year off and travel, work, relax, do other things. 
I also plan on taking a gap year. I plan on applying this upcoming June. So that'd be for fall of 2026, I believe. Um, but I also want to say that there are students who choose not to take a gap year. Um, I know a lot of friends right now who are in the cycle right now and are starting the process of interviews that are coming up. So it's definitely doable. It just depends on what you think works best for you and your schedule, whether or not you want to take no gap year, one gap year, or up to two or more gap years. Um, yeah. Yeah, as Riley um, was uh, suggesting, there are definitely, it's a, it's a growing trend. I will say, you know, students taking gap years between, not between high school and um, un, un college, but between um, finishing their undergraduate degree and going on to a health professional school. And so it's definitely not something that's uncommon anymore. And we have students who spend that the gap year or years in a lot of different ways. Some like Karina are trying to finish up um, requirements to apply to those health professional schools. Others become medical scribes or part-time ENTs or um, get just work in the fields. And for some of our students, we also have a, um, a very popular option these days of getting a, a progressive master's degree. And so um, we do offer a number of master's degree programs here at USC. And if you enroll in a progressive master's degree program, you can actually um, get both your bachelor's degree and your master's degree in the space of five years. And so that's also something that we have some of our students um, do in, in a gap year. They, in that fifth year, in other words, they're actually, they've completed their undergraduate degree, but they're finishing up a master's degree, which is a pretty um, great thing. And so, and, and you can do that in a whole host of different areas. And so I know students who've done that in global medicine um, or in um, other type of, you know, kind of more computational biology type of areas. And so, so really, I think it's, it's great that we have so many different ways that you can help supplement your applications to health professional schools, but in ways that feed you best in a sense. And so, um, you know, we have some students who are wondering, you know, kind of going back to this idea of, you know, the support and the community here, you know, is it easy to get to know professors? You know, um, is that something that's challenging to do, especially at a large school like USC, or has it been easy to get to know professors? Um, I think it really depends on the person, because obviously for the really large um, general education requirement classes, it could be hard to get to know your professor in lecture time, but all the professors have office hours, um, usually two or three times a week, where they answer questions about the class and get to know the students. So if you're willing to take time out of your day to go to these office hours, then getting to know your professors is totally doable, and it's actually a really great experience. I, yeah, it's pretty easy for your professors to get to know you if you're willing to put in that time to go to office hours. I remember like a month ago, one of my old professors was like, oh, hi, Karina, how are you? And I was like, they remember me. Like, yeah, I was just so excited about it, but I would go to office hours pretty frequently. Yeah. There's also certain programs that you can take your freshman year to kind of limit your class sizes. So you can have more opportunities to be one on one with your professor um also which might help you get to know your professors more for example there's freshman honor society which you have a separate gen bio and gen chem classes your freshman year i think the cohort sizes are anywhere from like 30 to 50 people depending per year um which is really cool i've had friends there who said that they really liked the experience it was better for them to get to know their peers more and talk with their professor in addition i know for being a chemistry or a biochem major, you get a different chem classes. So I took the general chemistry for chem majors and OCHEM for, o for chemistry majors also, which limited my class sizes. So my class sizes were like around 80 for both, which also helped me um, get to know my chemistry professors a lot more. And there's also certain classes you can take in general for one unit. I believe in bio and chem, there's like chem 294. I don't know what the equivalent is for BISC. But it's basically where every week a professor comes in and talks about their research. So it not only a allows you to get opportunities to be involved in research with different professors, but it also gets you to be exposed to multiple professors outside of your regular classes that you would take um, and kind of grow a relationship with them. Those are all great suggestions. And and I do want to mention that that program that Andrew mentioned, um, the Freshman Science Honors Program, that is something that um, any um, student, it's nothing you have to worry about right now. Students who've been admitted to USC are eligible to, um, as incoming freshmen, are eligible to apply to that program. Um, you do have to be a Dornside Natural Science major or a Health and Human Sciences major to be eligible to apply. But that's something, if you've been admitted to USC in the spring, um, that you can hopefully look forward to um, applying to. And then we would let you 
you know before the May 1st decision deadline as to whether or not you've been admitted into that program. But as Andrea mentioned, it is um, smaller and advanced versions of general chem chemistry and general biology that are taken in your freshman year. It's only for the freshman year. So I just wanted to clear that up. Um, you know, related to um, the experience in your classrooms with your professors, you know, all of you have had to take a I'm sure a lot of lab classes. And so what has your experience in the labs been like? And, you know, have you have you taken, you know, I guess, do you feel like it's really kind of helped you again in your pursuit toward pre-health goals? I say definitely, yes. I've taken um, the Gen Chem labs, OCHEM labs, BISC labs, um, and I've also taken analytical chemistry lab. All of it is definitely like hands-on work that you do either independently or with a partner, depending on the experiment. Um, this has really helped me just because I would intend on pursuing a joint MD PhD program in the future. Um, and so with my experiences in the labs that I've taken, that'll definitely help with the PhD portion when I become a grad student and also go into the wet lab and further conduct experiments. The labs that I've taken have honestly been my favorite part of like I preferred them more than the lecture because I feel like you got that hands on experience where you were able to apply the topics that you learned. And it was just again with that like culture of all the students like everyone's there to help you out and it's really cool because you get to know your peers like on a better level I just think it's really fun. Yeah, I completely agree I think it's great being able to actually apply the knowledge you learned in lecture for that hands-on experience. And also through my human biology lab, we get case studies where we're given certain symptoms someone has, and then we give a diagnosis based on that. And that has just been such a cool experience. So I definitely think the labs are helpful for the future and also just like the most fun part of the classes. And then related to this, uh, we have someone else who's asking, what's been your favorite class at USC? Doesn't have to be science related. And <laughs> so, but any any class that you've taken, your favorite class at USC, because you know USC offers a lot. <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> you can go, you can go. Okay. Um, I would say my two favorites have been, I don't know the exact number, but it's um introduction to uh surgical principles with Dr. Kim. That one is so fun because we learn about the history of surgery. And also we got a suture in orange at one point. Um, it was really cool. And then the my other one is a cinematic arts class. It was cinematography. And in that class, we made seven short films. Um, and you can have zero experience with the camera and you learn how to do everything from start to finish. My favorite class is related to psychology. So it was abnormal psych. So I was able to learn about all the psychological disorders there's out there ranging from like schizophrenia to bipolar disorder. And I just thought it was a really fun class. Like it was just so interesting to learn about everything about it. My favorite class is not STEM related. It was a general seminar class I took freshman year. It was called Nudging for Better Behavioral Changes. It basically taught you certain advertisements companies and other like post-its that you see around campus and around the city of Los Angeles nudge you to think or feel a certain way or kind of pressure you almost to like act a certain way um, and our, I thought that was really cool because I never thought of any like company or advertisements ever doing that so it changed my perspective as to how to look at certain things um, and our final project of that class was to kind of come up with our own nudge for change, which I thought was really cool because it was both learning and kind of how can we incorporate our own ideas to make the world a better place. Fascinating. It's great to have classes that really make you think in different ways. And that's and that's something I think that we have a lot of here at USC. Um, do you have any advice for students who may not be sure if they want to study for or want to pursue, for example, a pre-pharmacy path or a pre-med path or a pre-physician assistance track, you know, if they're if they're kind of not sure, but because there's so many options out there, or perhaps who maybe not even are sure if they want to follow a pre-health path at all, you know, um, any advice as far as, you know, starting off and everything, any, any advice that you would give to them as far as um, relieving some of this, the stress and anxiety of feeling like they have to choose and have to know what their whole life is gonna look like now. I actually was in that position when I first entered USC. I know I wanted to be in the health field, but I didn't know exactly where to go. And I thought the pre-health office 
they have this event where it's called speed mentoring. So it's a bunch of physicians, nurses, ophthalmologists, like every healthcare profession you could think of was in that room. And you were able to have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them and they'd give you a timer of five minutes. So it was great to like kind of just meet everyone and ask any questions that you may have. So I think that was really helpful and just solidifying like, okay, narrowing down my options a little bit, but also just shadowing is probably the best way to start I think one of the best opportunities, especially if you're undecided in a major also, is just get your general education requirements out of the way. Um, that's what a lot of my friends have done when they came in undecided, because A, not only does it allow you to still kind of help you finish your degree on time, but B, it allows you to explore basically every single subject area possible that USC has to offer, um, anywhere from the arts, like STEM, math, or even kind of more social science um, type related courses. So it gives you an opportunity to explore classes that you think you may be interested in for science and beyond. So if you choose not to pursue, you know, STEM pre-health or anything related. Yeah, I completely agree. And um, also if you come into Dornsife, whether that be undecided or with a major in mind already, um, you can switch so easily. You can move to a different major. You can move to another field completely, especially in Dornsife because there's such a vast variety of majors and um, different pre-professional routes you can go. Um, so I agree, just take your general education requirements and see where that leads you and you can change at any moment you want. Great. And then one final question, just in general, do you have any advice that you would give to entering entering students, um, students that are excited about the prospect of starting here um, at USC, any advice, anything not, you know, can't miss opportunities or any general advice that you would have um, now that you're seniors and can kind of look back on it and kind of um, remember what it was like when you started and the things that you wish you had known? I have two. Um, the first is say yes to everything. Well, almost everything. But um, <laughs> in the terms of don't let an opportunity go by just because you're hesitant about it. Um, I feel like freshman year, a lot of us could be like kind of more shy, intimidated by the fact that we're new to campus. We don't know anybody. I knew nobody walking in. Um, but it's just the fact that being able to say yes or, you know, have a friend invite me to go get coffee or like go to this club meeting. I think those were valuable things and um, experiences that I took away from USC that helped me create friendships and create more experiences that helped me decide what I wanted to do with my life in the future outside of USC. Um, yes, so that's my goal. And then another thing I want to mention is take your time, never stress too much about the future, just enjoy the moment that you have at USC. I feel like now that I'm a senior, I keep reminiscing of the fact of my younger years and my biggest regret was not being more present in the moment. I feel like especially pre-health, a lot of us are more concerned about like, oh, can I get into medical school? How do I get into medical school? Um, but you're only 18 once. Enjoy being 18. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Say yes to almost everything, uh, especially go to all the Welcome Week events. I think that was the craziest, most fun week. You meet so many people. And there are tons of events at USC hosts. And I just, I've met so many of my friends during that one week, which is crazy. Obviously, um, you'll meet people in other places too, but just be open to meeting new people and learning about new people. Um, and a similar with Andrea, don't jump into anything too quickly. You don't have to do all your research and all your volunteering and everything the first semester, the first second you get to USC. I'd say first semester, really just enjoy yourselves and take in everything that USC has to offer and meet all these new people because you're. this is like a once in a lifetime experience. Yeah, I feel like everything will fall into place at the right place at the right time. Just don't try to stress yourself out too much. And my biggest advice would be to attend the football games, like all of the football games. It, the atmosphere is just insane. Just walking with hundreds of fans through campus to the Coliseum is just such a unique experience. I before I attended USC, I had no interest in football at all. And then now I'm like watching all the games and it's just, I have a season pass. It's just so much fun. 
great advice. Um, thank you so much to our student panelists and thank you all for joining us today and submitting your questions. I want to take just a minute to go over our application deadlines because they are coming up soon. Um, USC has a non-binding early action admission option for our first year or freshman applicants. So if you're planning to apply to a major in Dornsife or any other major that does not require an audition or an arts portfolio, and if you're interested in that early action option, please select early action as your admission plan and then submit your application by November 1st, 2024. This is also the option that you would choose if you'd like to be considered for merit scholarships for entering first year students. If you're not interested in being considered for those merit scholarships, um, but you'd still like to come to USC, please apply by that regular decision deadline of January 15th, 2025. Um, for any transfer applicants in the audience planning to apply to a major in Dornsife, or again, any other major that does not require an audition or arts portfolio, February 15th, 2025 is your application deadline. If you have additional questions about Dornsife or the application process, we're actually going to be holding webinars both tomorrow and next Tuesday called Ask Dornsife Admission, um, where the Dornsife Admission team will answer your questions as we near that November 1st early ap action application deadline. Finally, we have our contact information in the chat. And so um, please be sure to keep in touch as you need to, especially if we weren't able to answer, to answer your questions today. You can get in touch with our Dornsife ambassadors, current students like Andrea, Karina, and Riley by using the ambassador link in the chat. So thank you all for joining us again. Have a great day and fight on.